Uh, Nasmi, it's such a wonderful pleasure to have you on our program. Thank you. Pleasure I, for me to be here. <laughs> I was completely, completely in love with uh, your work and I really wanted to interview you. Uh, can you start by talking about this amazing film you've made? Uh, with uh, It's a conversation between mother and daughter. Yes. Uh, tell us about that. Yes. Um, <clears throat> it's called No Longer Without You. And it's... Um, I, you know, it started actually uh, when I when I was speaking to another friend who was 20 years younger, and she was going through the same things I went through, uh, trying to make a, a life for herself, and at the same time a mother who is um, only thinking about the community and, um, and not wanting to let her go. And um, I saw this child actually. And, and she was confiding in me, like, you know, an older sister went through all this. But when you are yourself in those situations, you just survive. So I never really, but, you know, got it. But when I was sitting in front of her, I got an instant download about the whole situation. I saw this landscape of, of all these younger generations now who are, you know, some of them are gay, some of them don't believe, some of them have, because we're in Holland, Dutch boyfriends, some of them are not married, never want to be married, but it's all in secrecy, without dignity, you know? And at the other hand, you have these parents, and both parties love each other, and the parents are scared, they hold on to traditions, they know they have to reinvent their parenthood, but they don't know how, so they just, you know, try to oppress, and it really enraged me, which means it really, really made me so sad. And I thought, oh my God, there is no intimacy. And, um, you know, uh, um, and I knew we have to speak about the unspoken. Because I'm an actress, um, I thought, well, yeah, uh, um, then, I have to, then I have to do it. <laughs> I have to go back to the source, which is my mother, you know. And um, so I went to my mother, and I had worked before with my mother, uh, small things. And, um, you know, my mother is a Hajj, uh, she is veiled, she um, reads the Quran, she uh, prays five times a day, so, and she is not an actress. Um, but when I came to her, and uh, I brought Chidam with me, Chidam Yuxel, the girl I'm speaking about, the friend, who is now a re renowned. Uh, um, Photographer, she won a first prize, international first prize. Um, I brought Chidem with me, and I told my mother uh, a little bit about this. But I didn't say, you know, I want to do make a show. I didn't know. I just said, Mom, you and I have been through so many things. Uh, we never spoke about it, and I made all these things up about why you did this, and maybe you did it with me too. But I don't even know who you are, you know. And I want to speak about this. She, was, she immediately started almost wanting to talk. I said, no, but not here. Not in this confined area with, between four walls in the living room. I want to do it publicly at the Bali, uh, in between 100 people that we don't know. Are you in? And she said, yes. You know. So that's how we started. And then we, evening, you know, evening by evening, we, we, um, um, we did this show in which I, uh, you know, my mother and I were standing in front of each other. We had the arena, which was the, the theater space. Um, the audience was a witness, but also like, um, they were bearing a witness also of the process. And, and sometimes they were the community. You know, sometimes they were me, sometimes they were my mother. It was like a tennis match for them. And, um, and my director, Adelaide Rosa, uh, whom I trust completely because I knew I had to make it with her, because I knew that it needs to be equal. Um, and speaking about stuff, about this stuff, uh, I also knew it's not only about my mother and me, it's about traditions, it's about religion. It's about honor, it's about sexuality, homosexuality, it's about the Quran, it's about, um, you know, being your own person. And, um, uh, and what I realized with this, you know, 
this radical intimacy. You know, we were, we, evening after evening, we were, you know, bare naked, running at each other. And um, the thing is, you know, when you go through all that, uh, and you don't waver, you don't leave, not even in emotional, but you are present, without guilt, without blaming, you know, which is so difficult, you know. But at the same time, not being nice, to be able to, to cry, to say, this hurts me, you know. And um, it really was a continuous internal shower, almost. And the beauty of it is that, you know, we played this play also in New York, in English. Um, we did it throughout whole Holland. Um, first in theatres, you know, and the audience was predominantly Dutch. And the beauty of it is that every night that we played, 99% of the people were crying. And it was so relatable for them, because it is so universal. And um, at the same time, we did a tour uh, outside the theatres, in community centres. And we started here in Amsterdam, the first one, and it's a community center with, you know, the typical, uh, in Holland it's like a typical, uh, you know, a lot of women like my mother, uh, you know, veiled, around 60, 65, uh, Moroccan uh, women, and they come there and, and um, you know, once a week they, they drink coffee together or, you know. And um, so we had our dressing room in, in a computer room, <laughs> you know, and my mother was quite relaxed, and uh, she was like, okay. And then she had to go to the loo, and she came back. But going to the loo, she saw all the other women like, who were like her, but are, were going to sit in the audience. Then it hit her, and my mother immediately got a migraine, you know, because that was the moment I could see for, for the first time. Because in theater for Dutch people, it was like, meh, you know, because she had made sure that she said, um, I want to tour everywhere, but not in Hengelo. That's the small town we live in, you know, or she lives in, and I was born. And we said, okay. So when the first time she played in the theater, you know, in a, in a community center, and she saw all these women like her sitting, were about to sit in the audience, mm -hmm. then it really hit her like, oh, I'm about to speak out. You know, I'm about to speak out about all these things that we never talk about. But actually, that's where it's uh, most important as well. It so is. It? Yeah. And the incredible beauty of this whole No Longer Without You movement, this speaking out movement with my mother, is that um, from the beginning, I, I had no idea, but from the beginning, uh, Chidam, Adlet, and we had a whole team, people wanting to be on pictures, you know, aunts with their uh, lesbian uh, uh, nieces saying, yes, you belong to me, you know, love above everything. And um, yeah, it was a community Such thing. Such a powerful message. And the other thing that struck me is someone at the event we were at said to you when you were trying to get accepted and you said no. It's, no. it's the fact that you want to be still part of people's lives as the person you are. Yes. And that's what's so key here, isn't it? No compromise, mm, but exactly. not leaving, not having to lead a double life. Exactly. This is me. Exactly. It's, it's such bravery, I think, as well, and such an important mes message because so many are shunned, they've got to leave, they've got to hide. Yes, yes. and. And, um, of course, it is not uh, possible, I imagine, with every family, but with the tour and with all the letters we got and with all the people participating in the play and with going through all the community centers and in the audience, fathers, mothers, the children themselves, we realized, at least in Holland, that the time is right now and it's an in, in, uh, intrinsic uh, I don't know if that's an English word um, emancipatory uh, movement from the community itself because um, traditions yes it 
can be beautiful. But life also goes on and new, new generations change and they have a right to change the traditions. And when I was growing up, I was the only one going away, you know, living on her own to study. And I was not going to be a judge or something or, or a lawyer or a doctor. I was going to an art school. You know, what's that? But after me, the generations after me, you know, a lot of them got married to Dutch people. Or So in Holland, we have a saying, every house has its cross now. You know, it's not, it's not like one person in the community. Everybody is dealing with the same stuff. So the parents, uh, and there's so much love. There's so much love. So yes, I think the generation before me paid a very, very heavy um, price for being different. They, they were shunned a lot. They, they led a double life or they were forced to leave the community. But no, um, for, for the future generations, um, I want to say um, it's your birthright. Your place is, you know, in your community. Your place is the whole world, but it's your birthright. You know, don't give it up. Uh, and tell me about this uh, image. Uh, I, I don't know, I just find it so moving. Um, I can't even talk about it, it's so moving. But the image of your mother holding you. Yeah. And you're, um, you're, you're naked, are you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you're, you're topless, top, yeah. yeah. And she's holding you. And it's a, both an image where she's trying to hide you, but also it's such a loving image. You <laughs> yes. know? So tell, tell me about that and also what the reactions were to that image. Yeah. So, um, uh, we wanted not only to make it, this performance for the theatre, but we wanted to make it uh, into a movement, which meant you had to come out as parents, as, as I said. And so we made pictures. Chidem, our photographer, uh, the friend, um, she made 20 pictures. So I was the first one to go on the picture with my mother. And I was thinking about the image, what should we do? Because we also decided, it should not be like I'm going to tell you, yes, this is your niece, she's lesbian, you are her aunt, uh, you just, you know, sit down and talk, and that's it. No. Because we took the, the moment of making the picture was already the speaking about it, the digesting of the whole wound, you know. So I thought with my mother, what is our uh, uh, wound? She thinks I'm always, you know, uh, trying to bear everything naked, you know? And I think she wants to suppress me and cover me and, you know, you know, and very violent also, very dominant. So I didn't tell her much. <laughs> she came and I said, Mom, uh, you know, this is how I, this is the mental uh, war that we are in. Uh, and now we are going to do it in real life. And Chidem is going to take our picture. And uh, if people see my tits, it's your fault. And you didn't do your job well, you know. She was like, no, what? Shit. Um, and then she made sure, because she's veiled, that she had like a stocking on her head, you know, that, that if in the turmoil, yeah, it doesn't, yeah, that she didn't have to worry, you know. Then she was like, okay. So we really fought. And I went through every stage. I, I, I became like a giggly girl, not knowing what she's doing, the violence, not, not you know. Um, I became catatonic, you know, uh, because my mother is really strong. She's actually stronger than me because her will is stronger. I'm like, oh, we should not dominate. <laughs> she's like, you know. So I went through every stage. And, and my mother was, you know, like, I'm going to kill you, and no, and, uh, and uh, oh my God, what are you guys doing? And, but at the same time, very competitive, you know? And I could, and the beautiful thing was that we became equal. And the, the, the not, the, the manipulating of the things and not speaking about it and doing this mental war, but when we brought it out, literally, it was so sweet. Because then, for the first time, I realized I am really her daughter. <laughs> because that woman with her power, I could, I could see herself, uh, uh, I could see her in me. Yeah. That was beautiful. 
So yeah. yeah, it is a beautiful photo, and uh, there's um, an image you showed where uh, I guess you had put them up in public spaces. These yeah, photos. yeah, and throughout all Amsterdam. And yours yeah. was one of the ones that was blacked out, or that. Yeah, the only one that was the only one. <laughs> that was blacked out, and and it was it was like a few months later in a in a neighborhood with a lot of Moroccan and Turkish people, and they had uh, covered the my you know and my face with it, and I remember you know. Uh, a friend taking that picture while cycling uh, past it and telling us, oh guys, look at this. And, um, and we thought, oh, well, you know, they can't handle a little bit because you don't see anything. You see it, well, you see a little nip slip, but, uh, you know. And, but when I saw your pictures, well, you know, with your dress. Was that the after dress, then? That was after, yeah. When I saw your pictures, because I was being arrogant about about them, you know, spraying down my my uh, picture. Actually, I realized I was arrogant in the sense that I thought, of course, the Turkish and American people cannot handle this, and uh, they they spray it down, you know. So um, uh, and then we left it. You know, it it was not a big threat, nothing, you know, because no. But when I saw your pictures. I, I looked at it and something happened inside of me. And I, and I like to be honest, you know, we have to dissect everything, we have to stay awake. And when I looked at your pictures, I realized they invoked um, aggression inside me. You know, like, I, I also wanted to, you know, erase. And then I dissected that feeling, all those images, all those thought forms that were, you know, triggered and came up. And I realized, oh my God, it's the indoctrin of the whole, you know, patriarchal, dominant culture from when I was zero, or I am convinced from my blood, from my ancestral female bloodline, you know, saying, how dare you, you know, dare you, how dare you, it's such violence. So then in hindsight, I thought, yeah, don't be so arrogant towards other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I guess uh, I, I could talk to you all night, but I guess as a final question, I mean, I was reading about all the other work you've done on honor killings, on on uh, the veil, I think. And yeah. Just taboo issues. Um, what do you, you know? What's what do you see your role as in the sort of because you are breaking a lot of taboos and doing things that are really challenging uh, things to the core. So I, I guess that's what you see your role as. And I don't know, you know, I'm an artist, so, so I, I don't, um, I've, uh, I also um, tried uh, for years to never let myself be captured by the left or the right, you know, by, or by people saying, you know, people told me, you should, uh, you have to uh, uh, do a, a segment or do, do work on this or that, and I was like, no, you know, I'm an artist, I do wherever, wherever my soul leads me, but the thing is, I work mainly autobiographical, you know, so, and all those things are things I, I encountered, you know, I was almost, uh, um, uh, you know, I was almost uh, in a forced marriage, and it was done so lovely, you know, so lovingly, but, you know, and I had to go through all this, you know, re regaining my body, you know, re, you know. So, how do I see myself? As a person who wants to understand and who wants to um, bring freedom, yeah. Yeah, and I don't want to do it from the male narrative. That's very important for me. And the male narrative for me is war. And I don't want to be reactive because I really completely want to be free. I'm not going to speak about stuff um, as a reaction, you know. I, I don't want to say, oh, this is not good. I want to create my own world, my own yes, my own beauty. I have two daughters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you too. It's, it's wonderful to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>